every data scientist dreams of creating beautiful visualizations, conducting complex modeling, and diving into machine learning methods. However, most of the time, messy data hinders our ability to do really cool stuff. Thus, tidying up the data is the key to unlocking your full potential. Unfortunately, reshaping data in Excel can be a tedious and error-prone task. Well, with the Tidy R package, you'll be able to transform your data quickly, accurately, and efficiently, preparing yourself for the step that really matters. This picture shows three simple rules which make a dataset tidy. Each column is a variable, each row is an observation, and each cell is a single value. But it's surprising how rare these three rules are followed. Imagine the situation where various types of information are combined into one column, but you need to spread them out into separate columns because the information they convey cannot coexist like in columns type and count. The cases and population values have nothing in common and therefore don't belong together into the same column. So we have to broaden our table by taking the column names from the type and the values from the count column. Simply put, we need to make our table wider. And while it's easy to manually copy and paste the data for two categories, you wouldn't want to do that with 100 categories. A pivot wider is amazing, but if you work with real-world data, which is often dirty, you'll certainly encounter two common problems. The first one is that pivot wider will eventually produce missing values. For this case, pivot wider has a useful argument that fills in the missing values. The second problem is that widening a table can lead to several values being put into one cell resulting in a list of values that violates the third principle of tidy data. Each cell is a single measurement. To address this problem, you can utilize the values fn argument, which enables you to fill the cell with an aggregation function such as mean. If there are still missing values after aggregation, because there was nothing to aggregate, you can fill them with the value of your choice using the values fill argument. A pivot wider is the more intuitive next generation version of the spread command. However, spread is still commonly used, so it remains in the package. Knowing how spread works can help in understanding all the code. Now, imagine this. You've got a bunch of data collected over a span of years. Usually, these surveys organize the measurements by year, and put them in separate columns. So you'd have a column for each specific year. However, storing data in this manner limits the information we can extract from it. By separating the measurements into different columns based on year, we'll lose the valuable variable time, which is imprisoned in the table heater, unable to be fully utilized. For such case, pivot longer takes multiple columns and combines them into just two columns, one with column names and one with survey values. This way, the information about time is freed up and can be used for things like plotting or modeling. So, in this example, we kept it simple and just used two years. But let's say you have a lot more data, like hundreds of columns. No problem, just use a colon between the first and the last column names to quickly cover them all. And if you want to make things even clearer, you can use the names to and values to arguments to give the new columns better names, like year and number of cases, for example. And the pivot longer command is basically the new and improved version of the retired gather command. But don't worry, gather is still around and people still use it, so it's good to know how it works too. The real-world data can be a bit messy, which sometimes requires us to combine several columns into one. For example, separating a century and a year into different columns doesn't make much sense. That's where the unite command comes in handy. With unite, we can do a few things. First, we give a name to the new column. 
Second, we specify which columns to combine. Third, we determine what separator to use between the values. Fourth, we can decide whether to remove the input columns from the output data, but I like to keep them in to make sure everything is working properly. And finally, we can choose to remove any missing values. For example, we could unite a century and a year into a new year column. After we are confident that our code is working properly, we can set the remove argument to true and say goodbye to those old separate columns. Isn't that cool? However, it's too early to celebrate just yet, because in the very next rate column we face an opposite problem, where two variables, cases and population, are trapped within the same column. Luckily, the separate command offers an intuitive solution to this issue. Let me break this down for you. If you spot a separator within your data, you can utilize the sep argument to inform the separate command where to split, and you can specify the names of new columns you want to create. However, the best part is separate is quite intelligent and can detect split points that aren't characters or letters automatically. This means that even if your dataset is super messy and different separators such as underscores, slashes, special characters or empty spaces are present, separate can still split it like a boss. But wait, there is more. There are actually two unique ways to separate a messy column. First, we can create several columns out of one, like we just did, but that's only half of the story, because we have some useful tricks that can make your life even easier. For instance, this output shows that two new columns are of the character type, put simply text, because they inherited it from the original column. But I'd like them to be what they really are, numbers. For this, we can allow the separate command to convert them to a better format of its choice. We can also split a column without any separators by specifying where the values should be separated. But we have to be very careful, because if we have too many pieces of text inside of a column, the automatic separation may leave out very important text. To prevent this, we can use the extra option to merge the rest of the text together. So we now learn how to create several columns out of one. The second way to separate is to create several rows out of one. This is useful when messy data violates the third rule of the dataset again and contains multiple measurements in a single cell. It's kind of pivot longer on steroids, because it makes a clean table from a single messy column instead of multiple tidy columns. But get ready for a plot twist. While storing several values in one cell is bad, storing several columns in one cell can actually be incredibly useful, because it helps to organize complex data and allows for more effective work with multiple subtables at once, using functions like map. For example, we can create multiple models and store their values for further use with just a few lines of code. I have also created a tutorial on multiple models, so feel free to check it out later. But for now, let's see how to create such nested data frame. Creating a nested data frame is as easy as just using group by and nest functions to move the groups into a list column. We can also specify the columns we want to nest, which can help with large datasets. But what if we already have a nested data frame and need to get the data out of it? Well, similarly to separate rows, which unpacks the single cell into several rows, TidyR package provides the unnestLonger function, which unpacks nested data into multiple rows. Moreover, we can easily turn each element of a list column into a regular column via unnestWider function. But interestingly, that creates missing values, which uncovers a new problem. The problem is that sometimes we think we have all the data we need, but in reality we don't. Let's take, for example, a study on cars with different transmissions or gears. 
Before we dive in, we need to make sure we are aware of how many unique values each variable has. Having two categories from the transmission variable and three from the gearbox, you think we'd have six different combinations of cars, right? But if we look at the combinations of both variables, we actually end up with only four distinct combinations. And here is where things get tricky. Even if we have a massive dataset, there are still some combos we might be missing. In our case, we have zero cars with an automatic transmission and five gears, and not a single car with a manual transmission and three gears. And this is a problem because these missing values are kinda sneaky. They are implicit, meaning we don't even realize we are missing them. And that's the dangerous moment when we start to think we have all the data we need, when in reality we don't. Fortunately, expand function provides a solution for it by finding all possible combinations of categorical variables we should have. But wouldn't it be great if we could add those missing combos to our dataset even if we don't have any data for them yet? Well, yes. Why? Because then we could estimate what their values could probably be. And if you think that estimates are too uncertain, Consider this. Even a rough idea is often better than no information at all. That's why it's essential to fill in missing data to uncover new opportunities. Because even when we have only three categorical variables from the MT cars dataset, we are missing eight combinations. Imagine how much would you miss if you have 100 categorical variables with several categories each. Luckily for us, TidyR package provides two ways to deal with missing values. The first is rather radical. We could simply remove all rows containing missing values, doesn't matter implicit or explicit, using drop na function. But that could eliminate most of the data, because missing values are very common, and we could have missed the opportunity to uncover something new and get a Nobel Prize. The second way is to fill up missing values with something useful. What is useful? Well, the average would do the job. So let's fill the first three columns, MBG, DISP and HP, with their averages. Hmm, the average may be better than nothing, but it's far from perfect, right? But that's not the point. The point is that you can first discover your implicit missing values, and then turn them into opportunity by filling them out with some sophisticated machine learning method, like chain random forest, which is unfortunately way outside of the scope of today's topic. But if you want to learn more about imputing missing values with fancy machine learning algorithms, check out this video.